Despite the fact that the first three Ace Attorney games are basically universally beloved, there's one case that everybody seems to hate. And obviously if you've played it, it's pretty bad in comparison to most of the other cases in the series. But is it really bad in a vacuum? Let's take a look at some of the issues people have with Turnabout Big Top and see if they hold true. General Creepiness Yeah, this case is infamous for having a love triangle between a 31-year-old man, your 21-year-old defendant, and a 16-year-old girl. I've had commenters in the past try to defend this with thinly veiled pedophilic remarks, and you'll be banned immediately if I see it, but I just don't see how anyone can consider this a good thing. I mean, characters in video games are supposed to be likable. Normal human beings aren't gonna like something like that. Bad Takumi. Bad. Annoying characters. Going off the point of likable characters, I honestly can't name a single character that I liked in this case that's exclusive to it. Regina's an idiot. Max is okay, I guess. Ben is a creepy dude. Mo is pretty annoying, but at least he has some depth. And Money the Monkey is goaded, but I hate characters in these games that waste time in investigation sections. And that's what Money does. Stupid Trial Rules In these games, I've always absolutely hated when you get penalized for pressing the witness. As a lawyer, shouldn't it be your duty to ask as many questions as possible to prove your client's innocence? It just adds a stupid extra layer of difficulty to the trial, and this uses it when you're cross-examining Mo. I hate it. I hate it. Why should I, as the player, be penalized for the writer's intentionally shitty jokes? It literally doesn't even make a ton of in-universe sense either. It's a throwaway case that does next to nothing for the plot of the game. There's no reason it needs to have a difficulty spike. That's the one thing in this case that really, really annoys me. The god-awful music. So far in this video, I've refrained from playing any of the case-specific music in the background. And there's one reason for that. It's fucking god-awful. I mean, I just hate the stupid sounds in this music. It's so annoying. Moving on, moving on. So, what's actually good about this case? Acro. Kinda. When it comes to Ace Attorney villains, Acro isn't so bad. Like, he's not the best, but at least he has a decent motive. I've said it in the past that he's a good sympathetic villain, and I think that's still kinda true. I mean, he did want to murder a 16 year old for what was really an accident, so he's a pretty shitty guy, I don't care how much he cries. He totally cried because he got caught, not because he did it. But I don't think he'd have been driven to murder if not for the accident that happened to his brother. Length. One thing that this third case learned from Turnabout Samurai in the first game is that the third case should be a two-day throwaway case. One of my biggest gripes with Samurai in the first game is that it's a three-day long case for essentially no reason. There isn't really much to do on that second day. At least here, the torture is over after just two days. Well, I've only put two things in the good category. Yeah, there are other little things that people can like, but when I remember this case, those are the two that come to mind the most. See, this case isn't bad, it's just bad in comparison to everything else in the series. If this were a standalone game, for example, I could see it doing okay. But the fact that it's sandwiched between two of the best cases in the series, both of which I'll be making videos on soon, really hurts it. There's never really a reason to go back and play it once you've gone through it once, and it doesn't really do much for you. It drags at times, and it's super forgettable, but it's not like utter trash or anything. None of the cases in this series are.